Hello, it's Don Michelle from Boho Tarot and welcome to my April monthly reflections. Long time no see, right? I haven't been on camera forward facing in on my public channel like in this space um, for several months. And if you've been following me for a while, um, you might know that I have definitely struggled with some health issues uh, that got kind of really, really bad around August, September of last year. And I have been struggling to recover from some issues with some medications and things of that nature um, since that time. So unless you are part of my membership, you probably haven't seen my face for several months now. Um, but I am starting to feel a little bit better. I am recovering, I think, finally. Um, we did have a little bit of, of sadness um, in April where our eldest dog, our big dog, um, had to be put down. It wasn't unexpected, but it did happen suddenly. He's been sick for quite some time. And since that has happened, I, I've actually been feeling better. So we think that perhaps there was something to do with his illness, which was a, a, a physical skin thing um, that he was going through. Um, we, we were thinking that maybe that might have been making my issues worse, being that he was in the house and everything. So um, I guess bittersweet there in that he's gone on to a better place and I am now finally at a, in a place where I can start healing and trying to help my, my body to fight off all of the things that it's trying to fight off and to try to physically heal. I have um, stopped wearing makeup. I've stopped dyeing my hair. As you can see, it's it's going quite gray <laughs> in several places um, or wearing nail polish or doing any, any of that kind of stuff. I'm trying to really remove all of the chemicals from my body because part of my issue with the medication was actually a, a physical allergic reaction to chemicals within the, the medication that I was given. So that's kind of like where I've been in terms of, I mean, I've been here, right? I've been on YouTube. I'm, I'm still here. I'm still doing my thing. Um, but I haven't been on camera um, outside of in my membership for quite some time. So I, and I have had a few people ask and, you know, make sure, you know, check in with me, make sure that I am okay. And I just want to say thank you for that. And I am healing and finally kind of feeling like I'm starting to um, recover physically from the challenges that I've been facing for I don't even know how many months now. So that's just kind of a quick catch up. I mean, if like I said, if you've been if you're in my membership, then this is old news to you because I've been sharing um, quite a bit of my personal stuff in that space. But real quick, I did just want to kind of touch on the membership again. I have had several people ask that they were a bit confused about what the membership is. So the membership is a part of this YouTube channel, and it's kind of like a Patreon where basically you're supporting me, you're supporting my channel, and in exchange for that, I am providing additional content. That's kind of like the bare bones of it, right? Of what a channel membership is here on YouTube. You're joining their channel, you're becoming kind of a, a patron of their channel, you're supporting them in the work that they do. Um, for my membership on my channel, um, Basically what I do in that space is I do provide a weekly um, additional video. So a lot of times it's unedited. It's more of the personal aspects of, of my practice in my life. And I talk about different things that I do and how I do them. Um, I have a monthly, what I call the monthly coffee and cards, where we take a look at all the decks I bought for the month and why I bought them or other things that I've um, brought into my practice. And it's just a little rambly get together. And the other big part of my membership in particular is I have the monthly medicine, which you've probably heard me talk about. And I share when I when we take a look at my tarot journals. And that is an, an actual guided tarot practice that I create every month. There's a video that discusses the practice that we're gonna be doing. There are weekly prompts. So every week there's three prompts um, to help us work through a, a particular practice or a particular reading, or we're looking at a different particular aspect of personal growth or our journey. And it's just a way for um, all of us to come together to kind of work on our personal path and to do so in a, in a supportive way together. Um, it's not a requirement to do it as part of the group. Um, there are lots of people who take it and they just do it at their own pace and do it in their own way. So it's a lot of fun and it's just a way for us to kind of all 
be working toward the same goal and then share together if if we choose and um, to keep us always moving forward with our tarot practice and in our own personal journey as well. It's been a lot of fun and I've really enjoyed it. So if you'd like to kind of find out a little bit more or join us in that space, there's always a link in the description box of all of my videos. So now let's get on to the fun stuff. Today we're going to be talking about my tarot practice all throughout April of 2022. I'm going to show you the decks that I worked with and then we'll take a look at my tarot journals and see how that practice has evolved and changed over the last month. So the first two decks that I want to talk about is the two decks that I used for the monthly medicine. And so for the month of April, I chose to focus on just two decks, one tarot, one oracle. Our focus for April was actually slow growing. So it was really about slowing down, having some um, really meaningful time with our cards. And we did primarily focus on oracle decks. So for this particular monthly medicine, the tarot was actually the supplement to that particular process. And the oracle was actually the star of the show, the main focus. So I chose a deck that I had just re recently got in at the start of the month. And that is of course the Lightworkers Oracle by Alana Fairchild. I have collected a couple of her decks now and I am quite enjoying them. This is an interesting pairing. I really did enjoy working with the Lightworkers as a focal point deck. So this was the deck that I used for the pull at the beginning of the week. And then we had another pull at the end of the week where we were wrapping up with our message. We used tarot in between, but the Oracle cards were really the focus of the reading and each card helped build upon the whole reading. So it was one reading that we did all throughout the week and we just added cards to it along the way, which is really cool. I really do quite enjoy this deck. This is one of the cards that I'm like, I'm half tempted to take out of the deck. I just to be perfectly honest with you, um, I have been doing a lot of reading about the cosmic Christ. So not Jesus Christ, as in the uh, biblical figure, but the idea of Christ beyond just a, a single person or a single gender. So, I mean, it's kind of interesting, but I, it, that card is a little bit triggery for me, if I'm perfectly honest. I love this grounding card. Um, this card has some really interesting artwork on it. Um, I do quite enjoy this artist's interpretation. I do have another deck that I picked up from this artist, which see if it's on the box, Mario du Duguay. Mario Duguay, I think I might be mispronouncing that, but um, I do have also his um, Oracle of the Angels, which is quite beautiful, very, very similar artwork. And I really um, do quite enjoy the artwork, but it really was about the messages for me in this particular deck. Whereas in the other deck that features the same artwork by this person, it's more about the artwork in that particular deck. So it's funny how you can have two decks with the same artist and what you focus on really depends on kind of where that deck sits in your, in your space or in your practice or in your um, collection. So for me, this deck is more about Alana's messages in the guidebook than it is about the artwork. The artwork is just kind of pretty, whereas in the Oracle of Angels from this same creator, is more about the artwork for me, less about the messages. So as you can see, it's very light workery, right? It, it very much has that star child um, kind of cosmic, angelic kind of energy to it. And it's it's been a really interesting one to work with. Um, I did edge mine in a really, really light pale pink to match this in the center. And I really enjoyed working with it. Um, it was, it was interesting and I do quite enjoy the way that Alana Fairchild um, kind of approaches the light worker aspect in this particular book. Um, it's it's quite, quite good. I did enjoy that there's the invocation um, as we often see with her particular guidebooks. We have kind of a uh, brief kind of takeaway message here. We have the uh, oracle message. And then of course the invocation at the end. Um, I kind of sometimes skipped around, but I usually found a little nugget of information in this guidebook that I really enjoyed. Um, I did also enjoy the beginning. I thought the introduction was really wonderful, kind of talking about, you know, what a light worker is and, you know, how we might define that for, uh, for ourselves. Because I think like everything else, everybody's personal interpretation of a light worker uh, can be different. So um, I really did enjoy that and I enjoyed reading the guidebook as well. Well. Now, while that was my focus for um, April, I did also pair it with 
the um, Hardy Tarot here. And I have done a complete side-by-side -side comparison. Um, it was kind of long, it was pretty in-depth, but I took a look at this deck compared to the uh, Thoth deck and the Waitsmith Tarot. Um, just looking at where the artwork was similar to one deck or the other and where it went, uh, went its own way or did its own thing. That was really interesting. I really enjoyed that whole process. Um, so I won't go too much into talking about that because I did go through that in that whole video. Let's take a look at how these two decks paired together because that was actually quite interesting. I really wasn't sure. This was one of those pairings where I was like, I don't know if this is going to work, but I want to work with this deck and I want to work with this deck. So we're just going to throw them together and, and see how it goes. And I do have to say that I was pleasantly surprised. Um, they do, of course, have very different art styles and they do have very different energies as well. So it was really kind of a counterbalance to each other, whereas the Lightworker Oracle feels a bit more into the sort of cosmic, um, heavenly, that really, you know, kind of Lightworker realm. The Hardy Tarot, I feel like balanced it out, kind of giving it a grounded kind of more uh, more into the mundane, more into the grounded reality of the situation. So it was kind of this really beautiful blend of kind of as above, so below, as we say, um, tapping into that cosmic energy and that sort of spiritual um, connection through the Lightworker Oracle and then seeing how I can apply that in, in my real world. And I really enjoyed that um, about this particular pairing. Sometimes aesthetically they pair beautifully together. I had a couple of readings that not, you know, beyond the message, that is the most important thing. I know we talk a lot about aesthetics um, and, and I do too. I talk a lot about aesthetics on my channel because that that is um, a big part of my consideration and my practice when I'm working with decks because um, these are visual tools. And for me, um, the aesthetics do matter. They need to resonate with me. Um, also, I do have a design background, so I, I can't kind of help but notice those things. Um, but anyway, uh, beyond the aesthetics of it, there, there were really wonderful messages that came through this. Um, but even just looking at it from an aesthetic standpoint, they do look really beautiful. And occasionally you get things like this here where you can almost see the transition of color as it kind of starts out dark, gets lighter, like as it goes up in higher vibrations and then kind of comes back down into the mundane world. It was really interesting when it did that kind of morphing of the energy across the cards on my table. And I really quite enjoyed that. You can see that really well here depicted in this Eight of Discs. And then we have the Divine Grace, the Law of Efficiency, and the Knight of Wands. So again, the messages too work really well together. I think they pair really, really quite beautifully. They're a really nice counterbalance to each other where the um, artwork in the Hardy is a little bit... I'm gonna say less refined, but I don't mean that in, in a bad way uh, or any sort of negative connotation. Whereas I feel like the artwork in the Lightworker Oracle is very highly detailed, um, very almost precise in its, uh, in its creation. So that creates like a really interesting balance too, because you kind of have, again, that more raw primal, primal energy coming through with the Hardy Tarot. And then when we get to the a central focus card, which we're pulling from the Lightworker Oracle, or I was during my particular practice, it really tapped into that kind of higher vibration, that more um, refined sense of cosmic connection, which was really quite interesting. I do feel that it really, these two decks together really kind of embody uh, human and the divine in a really beautiful way. I kind of feel like when I'm working with these two decks together, the Hardy Tarot is kind of me in a sense. Like it represents where I am or what I'm doing, what's going on. And the um, Lightworker Oracle kind of represents that that spiritual connection that I have to to things greater than myself. Again, it was a pairing that I was like, I'm not I'm not sure how this is going to work out um, because again, they are so different from each other. So that was the two decks that I worked with for the monthly medicine practice, and that was the Hardy Tarot and the Lightworker Oracle. So the next two decks were the decks that I used for the Simple Sunday Spread. And these are uh, little three card readings that I put out on my um, 
public Facebook group where I just share a simple three card spread that I do every Sunday and I put it out there for anybody else who would like to use it as well. And for this practice, I use the Divine Circus Oracle cards and the mass market edition of the Dream Keepers Tarot. Now I have mentioned this deck before because I used it last month and I did mention, I think in my last month's reflection that I had a bonding video that I was creating with this particular deck. Sadly, that video has disappeared. So I'm not gonna be able to do that. But you know, sometimes these things happen. So I'm not gonna cry over the spilt milk. We're just gonna move on. So this month I am gonna share with you kind of how, how I've been finding working with the um, Dream Keepers Tarot. Again, this is the mass market edition. Let's go ahead and move that out of the way for a minute. I do have the indie version of this deck. And I do have to say that I prefer some of the changes that were made in the mass market edition. Um, and, and there were just a, just a few, just a handful of changes, but I, I prefer what's been done. I feel like the changes were really good. They were really meaningful and they made a lot of sense in the context of the, um, of the card and of the energy and of what this creator was trying to convey within their deck. Um, this is definitely a collage style deck. I, I love this deck. <laughs> um, I did, I edged it in um, a really, really pale gray, which probably won't even show up on camera because um, at first I was like, oh no, it looks just like the cardstock, but it's actually just a slightly, slightly different. I was trying to think if I had an unedged deck and I don't have one at hand. Um, it's just a slight, slight difference. So the other thing that I did with this deck, just in full transparency, is that I hated the way that this deck shuffled when I first got it. I do struggle with the new, U or I should say newer US Games cardstock, because it's very cardboardy when you first get it. And it doesn't, um, like it's, it's substantial, right? It's not as thin as a Llewellyn. It's not as thick as a Blue Angel. It's like in between those two. But when you first get it, it can be pretty, pretty stiff. And it can be really difficult to shuffle, especially if you have small hands like I do, uh, because it's hard to get my hands around this deck anyway, and then really hard to shuffle it when it's new. Um, so one of the things that I did, because I, as I mentioned, I think last month, I took this deck on vacation with me when I was doing my whole um, bonding experience with it. And I got so frustrated with the cardstock um, during my vacation. I might have mentioned this in the previous video. If I did, I apologize. But um, I got so frustrated with the cardstock and it being so hard to shuffle, which was probably exaggerated by the fact that I only had one other deck with me, which was very easy to shuffle. So that compared to this, it was like this was just I was full on frustrated. I'll be I'll be perfectly honest. So. What I did, and if you do not want to see me mutilate my card, look away for a moment. But what I did was I sat and I basically broke this deck in by doing this, right? And then I turn it back the other way and I do that. And then what you end up with is this really funky shaped kind of card. And then I kind of bend it and, you know, just wave it around. Like I said, if you are offended by me kind of mangling my decks, um, you might not have wanted to watch that, but okay, I'm done now. Um, anyway, and then at first I was like, it, the, the deck got really, really kind of fluffy and floofy. <laughs> and you can see, like it definitely wants to expand outward, right? It just wants to kind of pull away from itself. Um, but after a while, you can see that the cards do actually straighten out once you kind of get back into shuffling them and working with them, they break in. And I have found that with this particular card stock, that is the kind of quickest way for me to be able to um, get a deck to break in is to just literally go through and um, kind of work the cards one at a time in that way. It does make them a little wonky for a while. And as you can see, it does make them want to, like there's that card. I think it just split right there. Um, it does make them kind of, 
Is that it? Yes, it is. So as you can see, it kind of makes them all funky for a while, but they eventually, as you can see with the rest of my deck, they eventually straighten back out and they get kind of a, a little bit flusher, but they're not so stiff now. And each card is um, has a bit more give to it. Um, it's basically, I think, breaking down the fibers inside the, the deck. So that probably means this deck isn't gonna hold up as well. Um, compared to some of the other decks that I haven't done that to. But I'm okay with that because this is a mass market deck and if I wear it out, I can just get another copy. I would rather have it be something that I can physically use and work with in a way that works for me than try to keep it pristine, right? I'm, I'm all about using my decks. I have very few decks that are, um, you know, for saving or or collectible purposes and so i i like to use my decks so if that means giving them all a big wonky bend thing for a while just to get them to break in and loosen up a little bit that's what i'm gonna do so the deck that i paired with this which was really interesting again this was another situation of i wanted to keep working with my dream keepers and i had just gotten in the divine circus and i wanted to work with it so i decided well i'm just gonna pair these two together and see how it goes now for my sunday spread most of the time i ended up um pulling the three cards for the spread with the um, Dream Keepers Tarot, and then I pulled additional cards with the Divine Circus, which we'll see in my tarot journal, to kind of expand upon that message or to give me a, a focal focal point or an energy to tap into. Um, but they do actually work quite well together in, in this kind of standard three card configuration that I normally do. Sometimes, as you can see here, the um, imagery and the energy and even the messages flow really really well and occasionally particularly when those clowns come up it is a little bit disjointed and it does kind of throw me off a little bit but it also makes me stop and think and look at things from a different perspective so it's not always a bad thing I do have a full video on this particular deck as well because I shared it kind of when I first got it and opened it and was taking a look at it. Um, but look at this, we have the Five of Wands, the Date with Destiny, and the Three of Wands. Does this not look like she's waiting for her date with Destiny? I mean, I think it's pretty cool. So yeah, this is one of those um, pairings that like, sometimes it's a bit hit or miss. Sometimes the message is really, really quick click and sometimes I'm looking at it like, I don't know what you're trying to tell me right now. And sometimes the aesthetics are just the complete opposite of each other like we see here. And a lot of times with the Divine Circus, I do have to really work with the guidebook um, because there's no like keyword on these cards. And I really, really do wish there was at least a single keyword on the card. It's more of the title of the card that we see here. And if you really wanna know like what the crown, Clown of Crossroads means, you kind of have to dig into the guidebook for that. So that's kind of a, does kind of make this deck a little bit more of a challenge for me to work with um, just in a kind of quick reading everyday sense because I do have to take the time to get into the guidebook. However, it is well worth reading the guidebook entries for these cards um, because there's there's usually something really good and meaty within there that you can take away. Uh, and sometimes you get these really interesting, just completely contrasting energies like we see here with this really dark King of Cups and this really dark Knight of Swords on this really bright background that kind of mimics the background here. But you can kind of see that darkness. And again, you know, I'm kind of all about the color. Where, where's the color drawing me? Um, so this moon is kind of the same color as her hair. And then we have these sort of black and white in her hat and in her clothing. And it's just, it you know, it makes it really interesting to dive into in a kind of um, intuitive way as well. I feel like if you really just tapped into the, the energy and what this deck intuitively makes you feel, you could definitely get some good information out of that too. But I think this is one of those cases where it's a deck that really does... Um, benefit from from reading the guidebook and like here we see maybe these don't even look like they go together but for me what i'm picking out is there is red very predominantly in each of these cards so her red dress 
her red dress this red collar thing and red shirt and red lips and and that to me ties these cards into into the cherry on top card um and sometimes the the divine circus some of them kind of look a little bit vintagey like we see here in the velvet queen it does have kind of a vintagey aesthetic to it but then there are other times when the the cards feel very very modern another thing that's really that i found really interesting to do with these two decks together is to actually pull my tarot first and do like two cards here. I don't know why I'm moving them, but <laughs> I'm just gonna run with it. Um, so I have my, my two tarot cards and then sometimes what I would do is I would go through here and go, hmm, which of these cards is feeling like it's gonna belong in this space? And maybe I might pick this dark Harlequin because we have the, um, sort of similar color palette represented between these two. We have the browns that we see both in the background and in his shirt, the darkness in his pants. We see that gold through the pentacles. And then we have that kind of strong feminine energy that we see represented in the fates. So sometimes that's really interesting too, to kind of go through here and I would pull my tarot cards and then I would say, okay, which of these feel like it wants to, wants to talk to these two cards on the table here? So it's, that's an interesting um, experience as well. I'm trying to think like, what do, what do I want to pull? Maybe this one, I feel like this one. And this is, you know, me working with the deck very intuitively to start with because I'm pulling a Oracle card that I feel kind of captures or resonates with the tarot that I have on the table currently. And then I will go into the guidebook and, and look for that deeper message. Those were the two decks that I used for my simple Sunday readings, um, as well as just other readings and exercises that I did throughout the month as well. So that was the Dream Keepers Mass Market Edition and the Divine Circus Oracle. Now, let's talk about a couple of decks that I quite frankly, had a lot of fun with this uh, this last month. And that would be the She-Wolf Tarot, the Wilderness Collide Oracle, and the Into the Mystic Pocket Oracle. So while I pull these all out, um, I did do a video, uh, and not too in detail, but just a video of kind of going through this deck and, and looking at the She-Wolf Tarot. It does say that it is a Thoth-based deck. This is an, an indie produced deck. Um, which I am very happy to have. I, I've been attracted to this deck for quite some time. Um, and I've just, because I always like was like, it's a Thoth deck, I'm not gonna be able to work with it. And turns out I, I can. Um, and I could have worked with it even before knowing anything about the Thoth, to be completely honest with you. But um, I picked this, this one up and then these two decks are by the same creator. I wanted to get the Wilderness Collide um, Oracle deck. We'll just talk about that one first um, to, to go with this particular deck because the energy is super compatible. And generally I like to pair my um, tarot and oracle decks with kind of not necessarily opposite, but energies that kind of that balance each other or that talk to each other, that communicate because they each have something different to offer. And this is really interesting because these two decks feel very much in, in the same space. However, I would say that the She-Wolf feels a bit more unapologetic in, in its, and I mean that in a good way, like it's direct, it's to the point, it's, un, it's unapologetic and it just kind of gives it to you like it is where the Wilderness Collide does kind of take a little bit of a softer approach. So I guess in that aspect, one does kind of balance out the other because you, you can get kind of a harsh rating at times with the She-Wolf and adding the uh, Wilderness Collide into it does sometimes just kind of soften that reading up a little bit. That kind of brings a similar but softer energy to the She-Wolf Tarot. Um, we'll take a look at this one here in a moment. So the She-Wolf Tarot, I won't go into too much because again, I did do a video on it, but you can see like kind of in comparison and I think it's because the backgrounds for the most part, there really isn't a background on the top very often. So we get a lot of this really wonderful um, sense of space around what's going on in the cards. And you can see when you pair that with the Wilderness Collide that is like full on collaged from top to bottom, side to side, um, it does kind of 
balance it out in that sense of where I'm not feeling overwhelmed by the She Wolf in terms of the collage work. And so I can pull in a little bit busier uh, Oracle deck to um, to work with. So it, it works really well together. Um, I had a lot of fun doing digital collage with these two decks and we'll see that when we take a look at my journal. Um, I do just kind of want to touch on how I worked with these because it was quite interesting. We'll just go ahead and do the, the three card split that I normally do. I used these for my personal reading. So these are, uh, my practice is kind of shifted a little bit over the last, um, well, really this whole year and, and since I've started doing the monthly medicine, where the monthly medicine is kind of like the, the focus, the, the meat of my um, tarot practice. And then I have my Sunday spreads that I connect with. And then I have personal readings that I do for whatever it is that's going on um, in my life or that I want to know about, or um, maybe I just, you know, need some guidance, need some clarity, things like that. So the, the decks that I used for that this month were the She-Wolf Tarot, the Wilderness Collide, and then the Into the Mystic Pocket Oracle. And I just did variations of pulls with these. I did not have any spreads. Um, I just pulled cards in whatever way felt right and natural to me. And then I just read whatever was on the table in whatever way made sense to me in the moment. So it was a very intuitive process. I didn't have anything in particular most of the time that I was um, trying to like tap into. It was more of just a kind of general sense of, of guidance that I was seeking most of the time. And so just kind of following my inner voice, listening to my intuition and just laying cards down as I felt called to lay them and then read them in that way uh, was definitely a wonderful experience and, and how I worked with these decks primarily. Now, the thing that I used the little Into the Mystic Pocket Oracle, this is a tiny little deck, not only as in tiny in size, but it only has 27 cards. But this deck is I think it's supposed to be geared for, yeah, it says this deck was created to answer the question, what should I do about? And then you pull a card. So what should you do about whatever? Whatever your question is, and then you pull a card for your answer. Now this particular deck, again, is by the same creator as the um, Wilderness Collide. I used this one most of the time as kind of like my wrap up message to working with these particular decks. So I would do my cards, pull my reading, um, look at what was going on, kind of do my reflections. And then I would pull one of these little cards for my sort of takeaway message, which was really wonderful. And it's got some great things on it, like walk away from it. Do not let this write your story. Have patience and wait. Be honest with yourself and stay in alignment with who you are. Do not give up, there is still hope. I love the collage work in this deck, much, probably much more so than I do in the Wilderness Collide. Like I wish this creator would do like a big chunky, you know, typical 50 plus card oracle deck with these with these cards, with this style, with this type of type of an energy, because it's really wonderful. As you can see, like it, it feels like it was just made to go with the She-Wolf and the Wilderness Collide. So I really enjoyed working with all of those in that really intuitive way uh, this particular month. So that was the She-Wolf Tarot, the Wilderness Collide, and the Into the Mystic Pocket Oracle that I used for pretty much all of my personal readings throughout April. So real quick, let's talk about the decks that I worked with in my devotional practices. Let's start with this one. This is the Mother Mary Pocket Oracle. I know everybody has seen this. Um, I've, I've shown it. This is the deck that I am using with the little messages on the back for my um, nighttime devotional practice with Mother Mary. My uh, kind of spiritual um, deity in a sense work has kind of shifted over the last couple months and I am currently working with Mother Mary and Isis as my sort of primary uh, guides and goddesses in in my personal life, in my spiritual life, in, in all aspects of my life to be perfectly honest. And so I've been um, doing kind of daily really nighttime um, devotions and, and prayers and work with Mother Mary. And this is the deck that I have been using for that. 
had to actually go get it out of my bedroom because that is where it lives. I do have um, the larger edition as well still, but I'm not sure that I'm gonna hang on to it because this one actually works really well for um, what I am doing with it, if I could get it back in its box. Uh, because it, you know it's small and it's great for um, you know little bedtime readings and so I've really been enjoying that. Um, it's it's a beautiful little deck and I really enjoy working with it. So that one is the Mother Mary Oracle. Now I've also been working with the Goddess Isis and that's been a new relationship that I've been cultivating and working with. Um, in, in all, again, all aspects of my life. I started the month with the Isis Oracle and I have talked about this deck, um, I think it was in last month's um, monthly wrap. I do like this deck. I like the write-ups in the guidebook, but to be perfectly honest, after a while, because what I've been doing with these is I pull the large cards. Um, I pull one every, not, necessarily every day but every day or two or three um, when I do devotional work with Isis. Now I work with Isis daily but I don't always sit down and do um, long journaling and devotional practices on a daily basis. That's usually a couple times a week and I was pulling one of these cards out and I put it out on my altar with Isis. And the thing about this deck is kind of after a while, um, I'm not a fan of Jimmy Manton artwork. I'll just be honest about it. I find it hypersexualized. And after a while, I'm just like, mm, I don't want to look at it anymore. Like just in, in all honesty, um, I do really enjoy the guidebook and I will come back to it and use it again because I enjoy the guidebook. And the non people cards are quite beautiful. It's just this kind of hypersexualized version of Isis doesn't really resonate with how I'm finding um, the my experience and the energy working with Isis. So there's a little bit of a disconnect there for me um, that I found after, you know, actually working with it and doing um, doing some more, you know, just working with it for longer, right? The longer we work with the deck, the better we get to know it. So I was at the bookstore um, so about probably halfway through the month and I saw this deck, which I've seen a million times. I've watched walkthroughs of this deck. Um, I have seen people talk about this deck. This is the Priestess of Light Oracle. And I've always been like, it's beautiful, but I don't have a place for it in my collection, right? I don't have a need for it because I I have other priestessy goddesses, divine energy decks. I have edged it as I'm sitting here slinging it around in front of you. Um, Let's just kind of pull the box out of the way for a moment. I, um, but I saw it and I was like, you know what? That kind of has the energy of how I feel and how I work with Isis. This deck is the, the imagery of the deck and the energy of the deck is much more in alignment with how I experience that, that energy and that work. Um, it's very earthy, it's very grounded. It does have, you know, this spiritual connection like we do see here in this card. Um, but it also, like working with Isis, and I don't wanna get too, too, too far into that, but working with Isis definitely feels very grounded in, um, in earth energy and in the, in the real world in a sense, which is quite interesting. And this deck to me just kind of fit that space a little bit better. It kind of represented that energy a bit more. Um, I also like that we have sort of different interpretations, different cultures represented because I, it's very much how I work with the divine is that it's kind of faces of, of the one, of the all. Um, they're all faces of the divine feminine for me. And so I, I like seeing the different representations because it does remind me of that connection. Um, you know, like this one feels more in the um, Egyptian realm and this one feels more in the Christian realm. And, and I, I dig that, especially since, because if you do research, like um, a lot of what we know about Mother Mary, a lot of that has ties into a lot of similarities about the stories of Isis. And so it's, it's really interesting. And I like that tie in because it kind of, brings me back around to to the all the one the the divine source so this this deck to me really represented that energy much much better and so i started using it for my uh, card pulls and i do have to say this deck like the um alana fairchild isis was like it was really nice and it gave me some nice messages and and all of that and you know it was it was great and it was wonderful this deck however has kind of blown me away because this deck, 
I feel like every time I have a specific issue or a question that I um, go to ISIS to, to work through and to work work together with always gives me the most appropriate card because I tend to do this practice in the morning and then when I kind of touch base with my card throughout the day I'm like oh yeah that's what you were telling me I see it now I get it now this this deck has just been so spot on for that and um, as far as working with the divine energy in that sense, the divine feminine energy uh, through the face or with the face or accessing <laughs> through the face of Isis, uh, this deck feels much more in tune with that energy than, than the actual Isis Oracle. So uh, for the time being, this is the deck that I'm using to connect with that energy and to do that particular work. Here's the backs in case I forgot to show them. Um, it does have the new uh, <laughs> the new Hay House cardstock, which I was shocked by, and my members will <laughs> attest to my shock when I opened this deck and um, shared it with them when I first got it. Um, I was a little bit like, oh, I'm not so sure, but it feels like papyrus to me. So with this, the context of this deck, it actually works really well. Um, the guidebook is actually quite nice too. We just get um, real succinct, short messages, which I actually really appreciate. It, it allows me to really focus more in on what I am experiencing within the card with just those kind of like key points to kind of point me in the right direction. And I love that there's an affirmation to, and I use that and I end my devotional time with the affirmation. So that's been really wonderful actually. And I've, I've like, it's really, this one deck has really helped um, enhance my uh, connection and my relationship with Isis in, in a very profound way. Um, even more so than the actual Isis Oracle, which is really interesting. I do still like that deck. I don't have any intentions to get rid of it, but this is the deck that is currently working really well for me. So this is the deck that I'm going to continue in, in that work with. So again, that is the Priestess of the Light Oracle. Okay, so now let's take a quick peek at my digital tarot journal. I am using GoodNotes on an iPad. I don't think it's anything fancy. It's not a pro or anything. The only thing I did add to it recently, which I can't remember if I mentioned in my last video, was I added the paper feel screen cover on the top of it, which I love because it does make it feel more like writing on paper when you're using the pen. However, when you're watching videos on it, occasionally it makes the videos look a little bit fuzzy. So here's my cover page for April and I'm just still using my normal a tarot journal template that I have like it's available in my shop too uh, which is very very basic because I didn't really know what I wanted and I just wanted to kind of start with something really basic and see how things progressed over the year and if I was going to even continue to do this process which so far I'm loving it so here's my cover page I created for April very simple um, just a little bit of collage work and here is my month ahead spread, which again, I used the um, Dream Keepers and the Divine Circus. I did also pull in two cards from the um, Divine Muses, I think, um, which is a deck I really, really enjoy. Let me pull that in here. Can you see that? So this was a free form um, month ahead reading where I was just kind of pulling my three cards, pulled my tarots, and then I pulled the... Um, the Divine Muses for that additional layer in there. And it's it was a really, really beautiful reading. I really quite enjoyed it. And here's my reflections, which we won't go on too much. Um, so what's really funny is I did my self-care Sunday spreads and I wrote them down on paper and I still have yet to go back and actually transfer them in here. Um, and I will, but I just thought, you know, in all just like honesty of sharing with you how this process has gone it or is going like I've left it because this is the reality of the world that I live in right now and I did these polls and I wrote them down on paper I like obviously I took a picture because I have the cards and everything and then I um, started putting all of this stuff in and I still have yet to actually transfer the writing in I will get to that but I didn't want to hold up this whole video just because I haven't transferred the writing over I don't often write my tarot readings on paper anymore to be perfectly honest because of this situation that happens here where I've got it on paper and I've got the images here and I need to combine the two but you'll and you'll see that that is the case for every Sunday spread um, but anyway what I did here is that I actually pulled in the image from the divine circus and I cropped out the central figure and I used it as a background element 
because as you can see here, the tarot cards were my main focus for the readings. So I have my, my three cards and the focus focal point for this one. So moving along, we have my personal readings. And one of the things I do love about the Digital Tarot Journal is similar to my month ahead where you probably saw for a second there that like the, the page behind it with my reflections is just all writing. So what I've done is I've actually moved those pages because they are full of personal information and these are very personal readings for me. I just moved those into uh, further on down in the, in the document so that I could show you every page except for those without having to blur or block out or things like that. So that's actually really handy for someone like me who shares their journal online. So I can real quickly, easily move pages that I don't want seen. And then once I'm done sharing, I can just put them back. So that was quite handy. Um, I love this page. Now what I was doing design wise with this particular reading was that I was creating collage out of my reading. And you'll see that like some of them are crazy and some of them are a bit more refined. This one I like, I think feel like it's pretty refined. I did a bunch of collage work up here with the moon and flowers. Then of course this is my reading, which is just obviously a picture because I did my reading on this table. And then I kind of took this central card here and I pulled, you know, drawing with my pen, these points of light out from this card which then ended up focusing on these symbols here which was really interesting and again that's all stuff that I tied into my reading but those reflections have been moved to the back of the uh, notebook for now because that's not anything that I feel comfortable sharing. So we're not going to see any of my writing this month, um, but that's okay because you can kind of get the gist of what I'm doing in here and what I'm doing with my readings. Again, you can see here's the White Duchess card from the um, Divine Circus and then my three cards from the Dreamkeeper's Tarot. So we'll just real quick take a flip through. This one is a little bit chaotic, but I kind of love it. Like I cropped out the pillars and made them extend out into the page and then I just colored and I did plants and... I sat here and drew all of these lines coming out of this one and again collage some roses and some stars. So because these were collage decks, I wanted to do collage work. And the really wonderful thing about doing them digitally is that I didn't have to actually sit and like cut things out, like find actual images to physically cut out and, and put on paper. I just went on to Google and I just found flowers and whatnot and stars that I liked and I just, you know, cropped them out and put them in here. This, these pillars are from the actual card and you'll see that in some of the places I used elements from the card in my collage and that was really fun. It was a very much an artistic collage expression and this is the first time I've ever really collaged digitally. Um, I've made many digital images using collaged pieces but I've never like really done just a straight up digital collage where I'm just kind of throwing things on the page that speak to me, but I'm not necessarily trying to create one cohesive image, if that makes sense. So here we have my next Sunday spread, again, pulling out that central figure and then my three cards from the divine, or from the dream keepers. This I think is, this one and the very first one that I did are my favorites. I pulled the two pillars from the high priestess, like made a copy of that card and cropped them out. I have the moons up here, um, instead of these orbs here, which I think probably are supposed to be moons too. And I pulled the path out from this card, put two red flowers in here from this this card or that match this card and I did the, the dots. And to, to me, this is a bit more of a designed, planned and balanced spread, but it did kind of represent visually what the reading was about for me at the end of, at the, end of the session. So uh, it worked really, really well in that sense. So here is another Sunday spread. And for this one, I pulled two cards from the uh, Divine Circus. We have the Lady Luck and the Silver Siren and then my tarot cards for my actual reading. It looks terrible without writing in there, but y'all, this is just how life goes sometimes, right? Sometimes you just don't have time to get it in before you need to do what you need to do with it. Um, this one is not my favorite. <laughs> and I think it's the last one. It is. This is the last one that I did for the month. I mean, the reading was fantastic. I really, really enjoyed the reading. I got a lot out of it. It was full of a lot of good juicy things in it for me. My Queen of Pentacles card came up. It was very on point um, for, for me and for what I was asking. But I just kind of did some floral collages and some circles and some moons. And then I took this white, black and white line from the Ten of Wands and I 
pulled it down the card like as in I just drew a white line and a black line and then I connected it from this moon down here. So the idea is that it kind of wraps around to create this, this circle for me. And again, this is just, you know, collage work. So yeah, that's, so that's the, the last one that I did for um, the month of April. Again, just letting things kind of evolve and, and play out however it is I feel that I need to express myself for this particular reading or for this particular thing. Okay, so I've had a lot of people ask me uh, about the monthly medicine and what it looks like. Okay, so I'm just gonna kind of show you a couple pages from the slow growing one. This is the journal edition. I do two of these every month. Um, one is just a reference and one is you can actually digitally journal on it or you can print it off and journal on it there. Um, there's always information about what we're going to be focusing in on. I do have a video that relates to this. So there's every month there's also a monthly medicine video where I talk about what it is that we're going to be doing or we talk about the subject we're going to be exploring. Again, we have information about uh, working with that. There's usually some prep work and then we go into each month has um, prompts and a, a practice that we are following. So for the uh, first week of April, we had taking the long road and what will help me guide my long-term growth. And that was the question we were looking at. And so then we pulled our card and did our readings. And you can see here with the journaling uh, page, I was able to put my card in here and then journal about um, the typed stuff here is from the guidebook. And then this is my reflections. So that's kind of what it looks like. We do a um, medicine spread every Wednesday. So we start the week off with kind of our, what we're going to be exploring Exploring that week, we have a medicine spread on Wednesday. And then on Friday, we have a wrap up or reflection message kind of tying everything together for the week. So that's kind of how the process goes. It does shift from month to month because we do a different topic every month. But I did just want to kind of touch on that because I have had a lot of people ask and there's definitely been some confusion about what this is. Um, it's not a tarot course. It is a guided tarot practice that I provide this documentation, all of the prompts and spreads that we're going to be using throughout the month. There are right now we've been doing three a week and you know various lengths and and topics and ideas that we're diving into and for those who so choose they can join the private Facebook group and we interact these prompts are all put up on the Facebook group and then we can interact and share our reflections and our thoughts and our feelings about what's going on uh, within the reading or the cards that we pulled or we can just chat and share with others through this whole experience so um, it's not a tarot course I have had several people ask me that it is a monthly guided tarot practice that I provide and I do alongside everybody who is in the Weaver level of my YouTube membership. So this all happens here on YouTube within the membership space. So there's always a link for that in the description box below if you're ever curious. So I just wanted to touch upon that a little bit and kind of show what the guides look like and kind of how the process goes. So hopefully that answers any questions, but if you have any others, feel free to let me know, drop them in the comments below. So that was basically the main decks that I worked with throughout the month of April. We had the decks that I used for the monthly medicine with the light worker and the hardy, the decks that I used for my simple Sunday spreads with the Divine Circus and the Dreamkeeper's Tarot. We have the decks that I used for my personal readings, which was the She-Wolf, the Wilderness Collide, and the Into the Mystic Pocket Oracle. And then the decks that I used for my devotional practices, I forgot, the Little Pocket Mother Mary and the Priestess of Light Oracle both of which I've been really, really enjoying. So there you go. That is all the decks that I worked with throughout the month of April. It was quite a few of them, but each of them definitely had very specific purposes and practices that I worked with them. So it's always fun to um, kind of create these videos to share with you all everything that I've been working with as well as kind of create a, a video diary for myself of of how my practice is growing and changing and the decks that I'm working with and the things that I'm doing uh, within the space of my tarot practice. So that's always fun to share and to have a record of. So that is it for me today. I hope that you had a wonderful April and I wish you many blessings moving into May. Thank you so much for joining me today and I look forward to sharing with you again soon.